When I bought my FT991A, it was because I wanted a portable rig that I could use for both emergency and outside operations, like going to field day and parks on the air. Towards that end, I did add a buddy stick antenna to radiate from anywhere, and in the last couple of weeks, I picked up a portable power pack. After some research, I chose the 1UP 720, which, as the name implies, is a 720 watt hour portable power system. In this video, I'll be giving you a tour of the system. I'm going to discuss the gazintas and gazatas, and those are technical terms. Uh, take a look at the display information and discuss some testing I've done with it. Let's get it started in here, nerd. Hey y'all, Tom and D3N here with yet another Ham Shack Chat. Before we get into the video, I'd like to ask a favor of my viewers. In the end notes, I'm asking for advice on a couple of rigs I'm considering adding to my shack. Please, either jump ahead to the end and see what I'm looking for, or go ahead and watch the whole video. But in any case, let me know which rig you'd like me to go through the reviews and give tips and tricks on, much like I've done with the FT991A. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. What is this? This is the 1UP 720. Uh, we're going to look at a few features and some of the knobs and buttons and stuff, but let's start with what's in the box. In the box, uh, there is a quick start guide printed on the back, and it'll tell you how to hook it up and charge it and do that sort of stuff. But opening up the box, the first thing we have is a little plastic uh, bag, and this has the user manual which I will be using shortly to go through uh, some of the uh, uh, specifications. It has a warranty card and it comes with a 24 month warranty. And it has this uh, little cheat sheet in case you plan on uh, connecting it up to a non-MC4 solar panel. Also in the box, a number of cords. This is a standard power cord. This is probably what you're going to be using most of the time to charge it. However, there are several options. I did replace the little twisty tie with a Velcro strap. So that just keeps together. Also in the box is our two connectors. This one is for charging from your car, your vehicle. So you can plug that part in, and this part goes into the uh, one up. And also, similar connection using the same connector. Uh, this is for connecting a solar panel. I do not have a solar panel. Uh, I'll probably add one at some point in the future. Uh, also in here, we've got a USB charger, which you can plug into the USB uh, ports on there. This is used on another another output port. And it also comes with a, I think this is called a Type-B, and a Type-C USB cord. Uh, and this is, this is a Type-C to Type-C adapter. Here on this side, we have a little flip up and you'll see this is where we will plug our power cord into. And it's just like you've seen this so many times, you're probably sick of it. And then on this side is that yellow cord uh, where you can connect up your uh, charger your, from your car or your solar panels. So those are the Gazintas. Gazatas are here on, well, we'll start over here on this side where we've got three standard 120 volt AC outputs. You can have a total of 600 watts, which is about uh, five amps of AC power. 
it'll take a surge of up to 1200 watts, which is about 10 amps. We have two USB uh, A's, and uh, those will uh, take provide 5 volts DC at 2.4 amps each. And we have a USB-C output, and that is 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, or 20 volts DC, 100 watts. These two down here are DC outputs, and you can plug that right in there. If I ever wanted to jury-rig a cord, I'd cut this one in half, and you'll get... 13.6 uh, volts DC at 3 amps maximum per port. And finally, our last Gazetta is our automotive port. That will put out 13.6 volts at 10 amps maximum. Now you know that your radio runs on 13.8 and this is well within the tolerance. Now we're going to go, I'm going to plug the rig in and uh, show you the screen here. The screen is active during both charging and uh, outputting power. Let's go over and put it on our system. So a couple of things I want to show you here uh, that I didn't show you previously. First off, over here on the charging port, you'll see this button. This is your uh, circuit breaker. So if you overdraw the power supply, it will pop that circuit breaker and just push it to reset. Also, right here is a little screw. And that little screw is for providing a ground to your grounding system. With that, let me spin this back around. And we're gonna start this up. Now, I purchased off of Amazon, this is a Obviously, a car cigarette lighter import. Uh, I got to tell you, when it came, it had a 2 amp fuse in it. I have replaced that with a 35 amp fuse, which is the same level of fuse that the one in the box came with for when you're doing charging off your car. Uh, we're going to plug this in right here. And I'm going to turn the power supply on. That button is right here. And you see it goes through a little startup. Right now, I'm at 98% remaining power. And uh, because I got no current draw, they say it's gonna take 99 hours to do that. Now, we do have a light here. Uh, there are two buttons right here and here. And this top one, will give you a nice little light you can operate off of. And it's an LED light, doesn't draw a whole lot. And we are going to turn on our DC on off. That's right here. That will energize this port and these two ports here. So I'm gonna push and hold that. I'm now on. You can see that my radio turned on. So I am all ready to go. I'm all powered up. I have the radio set to five watts out, and I am going to turn on the tuner. Uh, I do want to show you, if you wanted to get a little light show, you can press and hold that, and you get a little light show. Yeah, that's not really important to me, so I'm gonna that light show off. So I'm gonna turn our tone on, and you can hear that running. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn my monitor down. We can't hear that. But you can see I am running at 5 watts. I've got it set to IDD. So right now I am running, running 5 watts out of there. If you come over to here, you'll see that I'm actually drawing 110 watts. If you get your calculator out, and you do the power figuring, what you want to do is take that, divide it by your voltage, which is 13.6, and you're going to come up pretty close to that 5 watts. Right now, I am transmitting at 5 watts, and I'm transmitting into a dummy load. So, I'm not on the air. You'll note over here, I'm drawing 110 watts out 
of the power supply, that's DC. If I divide that 110 by 13.6, which is the voltage that's coming out, I come up with eight amps being drawn out. Now you'll note that the, the screen has gone away and to get that back, you just push and hold that until it comes back up. That'll, that's just uh, no need to have it on all the time. Right now, I'm putting out eight watts. My meter is telling me I'm, it's drawing in about five and a half watts. Okay, so there's a discrepancy there, uh, but just be aware of it. Let's go ahead and turn our RF power up to 10 watts and see what happens. So there's 10 watts. You'll see I'm now drawing 130 watts of power out. So let's take that 130 divided by 13.6 equals 10 amps. So this tells me I'm drawing 10 amps. If you come over here, you'll see I am drawing about six and a half amps. So let's crank it up to 15. So right now we're drawing, we're, we're outputting 15 watts into my dummy load. And I am showing on my IDD up here that I'm about eight uh, amps. Here I'm drawing 146 watts. So uh, let's see what happens here. If I come here and I go 146 divided by 13.6, that equals 10.7 amps, which is, uh, it, it is still running. It's not having a problem. For giggles, I'm gonna pop this up to 25 watts. So right now I'm drawing 25 watts. Here I'm showing that I'm drawing a about seven and a half amps that my radio is drawing. And over here, 158 watts. So we take 158 divided by 13.6 equals 12 amps. I wouldn't go any higher than uh, 25 watts. I'd keep it around 15. And I already described how I ran everything. So now I'm going to turn off my rig you see I'm back down here on receive, I'm doing 24 watts. So let's take on receive 24 divided by 13.6 is 2.6 amps. You, you'd never operate 100% like I was just doing. And that's how, to, how all of this works. To shut it off, first I'm going to shut off my rig. Now I'm going to shut off my DC power. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to shut off the whole rig. You see it's going off and it does sure not turn off. And that's this demo. So let me explain this test that I did. I set my rig up on WSJTX in the whisper mode. I adjusted my output power to 10 watts. And yes, I know that 5 watts is preferred. And that's, to be honest, where I usually do run but 10's so much an easier number to work with. I set my percentage of transmit time to 50%. And yes, again, that's, that's a high number. I usually keep it around 25%. But for the purposes of the test, I set it up there. I then opened up a spreadsheet. I recorded the time that I was making the measurement. I recorded the estimated time of remaining capacity and the percentage of remaining capacity. And I recorded that about every hour on the hour until I got too low to go on comfortably. I didn't want it crashing <laughs> while I was transmitting. I didn't, didn't know how that would affect my rig. And this is the result of my test. As you can see, it took me quite a bit of time. I started at uh, 11 after 11 a.m. local time. At that time, we had seven hours of charge showing on the uh, power supply display. Uh, we came up here till 8 p.m. where we had 44 minutes of charge left. 
and you can see there's a nice steady drop off I checked pretty much every hour on the hour everything was uh, plus or minus about three minutes so you can see I started off at a hundred came down here to a 15% and it was at that point I stopped as it stands right now we've got nearly nine hours of power available uh, in the t under the test conditions that I was using. In summary, though you have to limit your power output because of the current limits of the 1UP720, you can still get enough juice out of your rig to make a lot of contacts. The power pack is small enough and light enough to easily get it to remote operating places and has enough capacity to give you more than a few hours of airtime. It has multiple methods of charging, including on your car, commercial plug-in, and uh, it will bring you up to a full, full charge fairly quickly. Uh, and you can add solar to it which will extend your operating time considerably and you can fully charge it using solar too. Now for the favor that I asked you about at the beginning of this video I'm considering either an FT818 which is a 6 watt HF, UHF and VHF rig or an FT891 100 watt HF plus 50 rig. Uh, please let me know down there in the comments which one you would recommend and why. Tell me why. Uh, keeping in mind that the final rig would be represented in videos similar to what I've been doing with the FT991A. Also, feel free to recommend other radios in the same price range that you think I should consider and why. If you've enjoyed this video, please pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. I like that. I like that a lot. Please share this video with your friends. Sharing is fun. Especially on social media. And finally, please consider subscribing to this channel. And sign here, sign here, sign here. 73 until the next Hey Y'all. And thanks for dropping in for a Ham Shack chat. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.